liberal on a dinner date. You know, they don't split checks here, so I'll throw it on my card and uh, you can Venmo me later. We'll split it right down the center. Liberal man on a lunch date. It's so funny that he thought I got the burger. <laughs> Yum. My pronouns are he, him. And by the way, those are the only two options. Ladies and gentlemen, the right stuff is all about getting into the right dating pool with people who share the same values and beliefs as you. You'll start off by building your perfect profile. No pronouns necessary. Hello everyone, once again from the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. And today we are talking about something I made a video on while I was still traveling. I believe in October when I was in Cambodia, I covered the right stuff which is a conservative dating app backed by peter Thiel, pitching itself as like an anti-woke dating app just for conservatives no pronouns necessary you actually can't be gay on it either despite the fact it's funded by peter Thiel, who is a gay man as well it's really funny and it had those terrible adverts which we're going to just cover a tiny bit in the first part of this video and basically what has happened is i've discovered their marketing and i thought this app was dead and buried and maybe it is maybe it's an elaborate money laundering scheme wouldn't be surprising considering who's involved the right stuff which is meant to be a dating app on its social medias is now just tweeting like far-right american conservative politics and is actually on tiktok serving as a vehicle for the dating app's founder to try and make himself some sort of like conservative influencer and his videos are all about like why it's bad to date liberals and they're honestly so cringe inducing and what's so funny is it's not just a marketing strategy it feels like he's trying to be a comedian as well and i remember i was watching a curtis connor video from like years ago when tiktok first came out and he perfectly put into words why i hate it because you watch a tiktok and you imagine the person like coming up with the idea executing the idea maybe it takes multiple takes and that can be cringe inducing in itself but it gets even worse when it's actually in a public place as well and you imagine the process of filming these tiktoks and then also what's so funny is the founder of this app worked for donald trump's presidency two times in this video there's two articles i want to share one written by the guy himself about his work in the trump white house and how much donald trump loved the idea of a conservative dating app and also an article from someone else describing what an idiot this guy was because it's so hilarious to see someone's perception of themselves and what everyone else thinks of them and this is the trump white house right it's, it wasn't like a bastion of intellectuals but still even in the trump white house other people working for trump thought this guy was a complete idiot i don't know if any of you would have even heard of this guy but he's called john mckenty so we're going to talk about all of that today and before we go any further please like the video and in the comments i guess just share your experience of maybe either dating a conservative or a conservative trying to hook up with you because what i always love about conservative men especially is they really feel entitled to women despite their politics like they think them being massive trump supporters and basically being fascist shouldn't be the basis for you to reject them i don't know if it's because americans treat politics like a sporting event but it really boggles my mind they fail to see why someone wouldn't like them based on the political party they support it's absolutely bizarre but also follow me on social media at the cavernacle on twitter also on instagram instagram is where i'm posting about my travels all around southeast asia gonna go to japan and korea soon so if you care about keeping up to date with me on my travels please follow the instagram check out the highlight reels on my profile page i've also posted some exclusive travel content on the patreon page i have a backlog we and my girlfriend are going to continue making the videos when we return home so we are going to talk about all the countries we've been to care about any of that stuff please become one you also get access to the discord server and my nintendo switch friend code also check out the subreddit and check out my second channel down in the description so i'm always very much aware that at least over half of you watching this video won't actually be subscribed to me so you wouldn't have watched my previous videos on this stuff so basically for a quick summary of the background the right stuff was a new right-wing dating app which was launched last year i think the buzz started in about august it released in october and surprising no one it essentially just became a sausage fest and although the adverts targeted women they would get free premium access it really seemed to only attract men i wonder why that is and also the reviews for it weren't anything special but the adverts were really funny and we watched the adverts before and i just want to show you parts of them again because i just want to talk about like the whole framing 
of this conservative dating app. What I love most about it is that it's invite only. So not just anyone can join. First of all, it's free to use. And for my ladies, you'll never have to pay because we all get premium subscriptions for simply inviting a couple friends. Gentlemen, if you want access to premium, that's on you. And by the way, those are the only two options, ladies and gentlemen. Start off by building your perfect profile. No pronouns necessary. So if you're a young conservative looking to amp up your dating life, go to joinrightstuff.com to gain early access. We need to get back to the right way of dating. Today, we brought in a group of conservative young women and wanted to get their honest opinions about what they're looking for in the guys they date. What are you looking for in a partner? They just have to be a conservative. Definitely someone that wants to have kids. I like an independent man. Personally, I like the alpha male vibe. I want a man who really loves his family. Definitely someone whose faith is important to them. For me, it's someone who actually wants to meet my parents. Why do you want to date a conservative? For me, at least I know that we're going to start off with some shared values. Well, the conservative men I've dated at least know how to treat me like a woman. In my personal experience, conservative guys have better manners. <laughs> I like that they understand their role in the relationship as a man. I just prefer my men to be masculine. And what's the biggest red flag when it comes to dating? A Democrat. No Democrats. A Democrat. Can't be a Democrat. A Democrat. That's easy. A Democrat. No Democrats. So no. <laughs> Find the right match. Download the right stuff today. So an anti-woke dating app seems ridiculous on the surface. And so does the marketing. It's pretty clear that all those women were actors and they were paid to say these things. And it just plays into every conservative stereotype, like knows how to be a man, knows how to treat me in a relationship, wants to meet my family. Is that something only conservative men want to do? And like I've been saying before, pretty funny because conservatism as an ideology is pro status quo, pro patriarchy. I doubt even most conservative women just want to be treated like absolute shit. And that is really what you're promoting with a conservative dating app. Because if you are so hardcore conservative, you only want to date like conservative women and you want to be in this conservative safe space, it stands to reason that you are going to probably have some pretty backwards views on women in general. And although this advert might trick you into thinking loads of women do wanna be treated like garbage by you because they're also conservative, I guarantee even a lot of conservative women do not wanna be treated in a way that fits in with your conservative worldview. And of course, this app is not doing well, this app bombed. The reviews are pretty terrible as well, so it's pretty clear this marketing didn't work. But that doesn't mean the brand is dead yet because it continues to go on thanks to John McKenty. And I'm also 99% sure he's the only person working on this app. And I'm not even sure if this app is running anymore. I can't download it because I am on the UK app store and stuff. But I just think now he's trying to use this to promote his own personal brand. So if we go onto the Right Stuff Twitter page, they're not really tweeting much about dating. I guess they kind of are. They're basically just tweeting far-right politics. So if you go down to a couple of weeks ago, everyone agrees Tinder is ghetto. I don't even know what that means, but they keep saying it. The best looking guys in the world can get zero matches on Bumble. Many can attest to this. Bumble and most other dating apps have become a money-making scam. As opposed to the conservative only dating app backed by people who work for Donald Trump. I'm sure that is not a scam at all. Right Stuff has hired a new CEO chief exclusionary officer whose sole job it is to keep liberals off our platform. I don't think you're going to have any problem with liberals coming on your platform at all. Major ick. If they weren't extremely bothered by having to wear a mask during COVID because nothing says major ick than treating your fellow man with basic decency during a pandemic. Marrying a liberal is more dangerous than it used to be. They might put your kid in a school that teaches critical race theory or send them to a doctor that believes there's more than two genders. Reminder that Tinder is ghetto. Like, I, I bet they just paid some random people at this place to hold up these garbage signs. Here's John McKenty himself having this stupid Tinder is ghetto sign. I wonder how long he spent on that. Not very well colored in. That O is certainly lacking some black color in. Wearing a mask is un-American, not just figuratively, it's contrary to the American nature in a fundamental way. 
if you're a real American, you loathe having to wear a mask. I mean, there's an element of truth in this in that I guess America does prioritize individuality, neoliberalism and complete selfishness above all else. So maybe to be a true American, you do have to be a complete selfish asshole. So this is funny. Conservative women can be hard to find, but they're out there. I found them by joining the right stuff. New testimonial from one of our users. Let's listen to this. You're conservative. It's a tough dating landscape out there. There's really no way to meet somebody that's like-minded, that shares very similar morals to you. Conservative women can be hard to find, but they are out there. And I found them by joining the right stuff. This app is so much more than just an app. It's really a movement. It gives you a chance to be yourself. When you join the right stuff, your dating life will completely change. It's about conservatives sticking together. Totally believe that not paid testimony. Also, what's this advert? Why is he just walking around the hills pointing at stuff? Like, where's the women? You promised me conservative women. Where are they? And I also do love, I have to admit, there are basically like no conservative women on dating apps. And what I think they mean is, I don't think there's no conservative women on dating apps. I think there's a lot of women who might lean right who just don't want to date conservative guys who believe in this like hyper masculine ideology where they want women to fit into a certain place in society like wife, mother, stay at home, look after the kids, which in one of the TikToks, John McKenzie actually says is what he wants in a relationship as well. So they also have a merch page with like one thing. So um, dump your liberal boyfriend hoodies worn by various different models and then also worn by Kyle Rittenhouse. I guess that's the type of guy you want to advertise your conservative only dating app. And this just looks like garbage. Like, look at this writing. Like, why is it so squished together? And look at the back as well. Like, who designed this hoodie? Oh my God, it's terrible. So I think John McKenzie is running that Twitter account, to be honest. I don't think it's a very good marketing strategy for a conservative dating app. Just tweeting insane far right culture war things all the time. Like, is that supposed to attract loads of women who want to just find like maybe a partner? and have like a decent relationship, like just tweet loads of crazy shit, like maybe that works. Maybe that works for conservative women. I'm not an American, I don't know. So anyway, John McKenzie, like I said, he basically runs the TikTok account and he's acting in loads of sketches. This guy likes to be very dramatic. We're gonna go through a couple of them, but I just wanna read this article he wrote for Newsweek uh, last September. I was Trump's aide, now I run a conservative dating app. He loved the idea. So I'm going to read this, we're going to watch the TikToks, talk about them, and then I want to read an article about this guy's rise in the Trump White House and how everyone hated him because he was a complete idiot, and I think it's really funny. So um, let's go into his article that he wrote. When I think back to myself in 2020, working as director of the White House presidential personnel during the Trump administration, the thought of launching a dating app would have never crossed my mind. I was super focused on my role and rarely thought about anything outside work. So I quit my job and started working at Trump Tower in July 2015. The first time I saw him, I was answering phones when he walked in to say hello. I was starstruck. At that time, the campaign was incredibly small, so it was very easy to get involved and rise through the ranks. I had a few different jobs, and in 2016, when Trump was elected president, I worked as one of his personal aides in the White House. I'm pretty sure he just carried Donald Trump's bags everywhere. Personally, I thought he was the best boss I could ever ask for. I don't think many people would assume so, but he's incredibly gracious. He was super fun and fair. I thought he was a great person to work for, and I learned a lot from him. During my time inside the White House, I was definitely more career-driven and focused on professional success rather than relationships. I would date here and there, but I realized it's actually hard to meet women outside of my work network. DC is a very liberal city. I'm super conservative. How can I find people who have the same values as me? I found I couldn't really use the apps because it was tough to find someone on there with similar opinions. It was tough, but I didn't give it much thought at the time. Personally, I never and would never date anyone who doesn't share the same political views as me. Perhaps if this was a different period in American history, that would be fine, but right now it seems there are two separate worldviews and we're living in two different places. I left the White House in 2018 and was out in the professional wilderness for a couple of years. During that time, my buddy Isaac Stolzer and I tried our hand at developing an app. So talking about the right stuff, after deciding to turn our idea into a reality, we brought the concept to an investor, Peter Thiel, who thought the right stuff was a great proposal and that we'd been catering to an underserved market. We started officially working on it in September 2021. I speak to Trump occasionally and around a year ago I mentioned I was working on the app. 
He thought it was a great idea. He was super excited about it and loved the name. I believe conservatives exist on mainstream dating apps, but have to hide their political views because the vitriol against them is so strong. We're trying to be traditional in our values, but keep things light. The biggest difference is that whether you're looking for marriage, a relationship, or just fun, it's almost guaranteed that everyone on your network will support your political views. So I would agree to some extent, it does make sense to date people with similar political views, but I do find it funny that all these stories seem to start off as, yeah, I tried to date, but no one liked me because of my political views. Too few women out there were conservative because I don't know, maybe too few women are like crazy far right American conservative because it's an extremist pro patriarchy ideology, which fundamentally sees them as inferior. We're not talking about like libertarians who are like socially liberal, but leaving the free market or something like that. We're literally talking about basically fascists in this context. And they're crying that people won't date them. But of course, like anti-woke dating app, anti-liberal dating app, maybe they think it can work in this climate. And maybe they think because they have the backing of a billionaire and other people, they can make this work. Maybe it can be a good con, like the hundreds of cons Donald Trump did. But anyway, this guy's pretty funny. And like I said, he seems to be making the Right Stuff TikTok page, basically his personal TikTok, and doing loads of sketches kind of about dating. And why I say he's trying to be a comedian is conservatives only have like three or four jokes. So we have pronoun jokes. We now have mask jokes or jokes about the pandemic. And we also have like old jokes about millennials, soy lattes, avocado toast, liberal men not being masculine. And also he's putting on like a camp voice as well when he's playing like these liberal characters, basically trying to say like all liberal men are just like really effeminate. And I find that funny because how come when you go on dating apps, you can't find a date as an alpha male conservative man? I guess all those soy latte drinking hipsters with man buns are actually doing pretty well on the dating scene while all you alpha male conservatives who believe in like traditional values and all women should just stay at home aren't being too successful so you have to make your own safe spaces so let's have a look at some of these tiktoks i'm either going to play you a montage of them or i'm going to stop at certain points i haven't decided yet and also i probably would be playing like some animal crossing or nintendo music underneath it because he uses like loads of copyrighted stuff so sorry about that but let's get into this So I've stopped it here just because I've showed you a bunch of stuff which like has nothing to do with dating. Like what's this got to do with conservative dating? Just, you know, attacking liberals, trans people, talking about liberals taking COVID too seriously. Like both not funny. Also cringe that you're making these as well. But again, what's this got to do with your company? What's this got to do with the right stuff? You're just basically making this your own personal anti-liberal TikTok which is really, really strange. Like, did this guy just do everything to try and make himself a conservative social media influencer? But now I want to talk about all these sketches he does about, like, dating liberal men. So let's have a look at these. Liberal on a dinner date. You know, they don't split checks here, so I'll throw it on my card, and uh, you can Venmo me later. We'll split it right down the center. I won't knock you for that extra spring roll you had either. Okay, I have to come clean. I'm not up to date on my boosters, ah! but I'm going next week. When a liberal finds out you voted for Trump. No, I mean, I, what did you say? That really says a lot about you. Oh, so you're a racist. Do you hate women? Because you're a straight white man. Oh, so your dad's rich. So how am I supposed to pay for my college loan? Do you even believe in science or? The only wall I want to build is between us right now. Liberal man on a lunch date. It's so funny that he thought I got the burger. <laughs> Yum! Liberal man's opening line. So are you a Moderna or a Pfizer kind of girl? Liberal on a date. Separate checks, please. My pronouns are he, him. What are yours? <laughs> This is not a Diet Coke, it's a latte. 
Okay, so you had the fries. They were three ninety nine. If you could Venmo me. I, I don't think I want to have children. They say it's horrible for the environment. Speaking of which, these straws are plastic. Very bad for the turtles. Dating in 2023. That's really unique. You go by Z, Zer pronouns? Hmm. So you think we're all going to be underwater in 10 years? I, n I never thought of Halloween as being racist, but that's interesting. I take it back. I think conservatives have found a new joke. Well, this guy's invented one. It's um, splitting the bill. Splitting the bill is bad and liberal, right? Because people never do that, right? People never split the bill. And it's actually a very, very bad thing to split a bill if you go on a date. Now, I'm not completely opposed for one person or the other, like paying for it as a nice gesture, but the expectation that a man has to pay for everything isn't like a good thing, right? It's a patriarchal thing. And it also comes from a place where women didn't used to have their own income. So men did pay for everything. If you want to do that as anyone, I don't care. It feels like a weird thing to make a joke around because even if it's a true, right? Even if liberal men's one flaw was um, they didn't want to pay for every day and they wanted to split the bill. I think that is rather like a minor inconvenience compared to like all the terrible things that are inherent with being like a Trumpist conservative man. Like I'm not saying left wing men can't be awful. It seems like every couple months we have like another scandal where like some minor or larger left-wing YouTuber has been seen to be treating their partners terribly. So it of course can happen. But if this is like the stereotype, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. But also the other joke they got now is when you're on a date for the first time, you just keep saying your pronouns to people. But even if this is a thing that has to happen, aren't pronouns in like nearly everyone's social medias? And aren't they on dating apps as well? Like I'm pretty sure you can put like he, him, she, her, or they, them, or whatever on your actual profile. So why would you go to a date with someone that you've clearly been communicating with, who I assume you would have told your pronouns if you didn't put it in your bio, and just say like, my pronouns are Ziza or he, him. Again, like they think it's so, so hilarious. And it's just like this whole characterization of what a liberal is and how it's like such a terrible thing, which really, really makes me laugh. And it really shows how they just don't interact with any liberal people because I have basically never had a conversation that any of these people are having. But then you have stuff like, you know, reaction to being a Trump supporter. And the reaction is, oh, like, you're racist, you don't believe in science. And I'm like, but yeah, like, is that meant to be funny? Like, where is the lie? I don't know how someone who literally worked for Donald Trump for years thinks someone reacting like that to him saying that would have been, like, out of bounds. Like I said, do all Americans just think politics can be completely separated from, like, your personal values? And that being a Trump supporter says nothing about you. Like, you can just support that. Like, being a Mussolini supporter in Italy apparently meant nothing about you. Being a Tory supporter in 2023, it says nothing about you. It's just politics and you just, you know, completely divorced from any reality. You also had a couple jokes about, like, vaccines as well. Again, conservatives are getting funnier, aren't they? They're adding a couple more jokes to, I identify as an attack helicopter and liberals just drink lattes, as he also said in that clip as well. And also, obviously, like, switch the burger for the salad because, as we all know, Liberal men, they're so effeminate. They don't eat burgers. They don't drink soda. They just drink lattes and eat salad and talk about their pronouns all the time. I made that whole video on Nick Adams and he basically like embodies this humor, but he is obviously doing it as part of a meme as well as being partly serious. It feels like it's 10 years old at this point, like this whole notion about liberal millennials being like weakling, soy latte drinking, keto eating or whatever. And why I do find it funny is just because it's such like a boomer stereotype of young people. It's such an old man yells at clouds. And this guy is only in his early 30s. And no wonder you're struggling to get a date when you act like an absolute boomer, but then you also support Donald Trump. So no wonder women anywhere didn't like you on dating apps. So John McKenzie seems to have quite a high opinion of himself. Seems pretty comfortable, like criticizing liberal men as effeminate and everything like that. But there was a book that came out by ABC's chief correspondent, Jonathan Carl, The Final Act of the Trump Show. And the New York Post did an article about it and John McKenzie features in it. And it's really, really funny to contrast what he kind of thought he was in the White House, his like social media presence and what other people thought of him. So how a no-name idiot gained Trump's trust and rose to power in the final White House days. Yes, they are talking about John McKenzie. So President Trump's 29-year-old body man took control of personnel in the final days of the administration, hiring beautiful young women and geeky guys that were called the Rockettes and the Dungeons and Dragons, a new book says, 
With the White House in disarray and Trump's final year in office, John McKenzie, 29, emerged seemingly out of nowhere to become head of the ultra-powerful presidential personnel office, according to the book. The MAGA fanatic, whose former job was carrying Trump's luggage on trips, was an effing idiot, a high-level cabinet secretary told Carl in an excerpt published on the, in The Atlantic on Tuesday. But McKenzie convinced the commander-in-chief that he was the man to ferret out the secret never-Trumpers who had infiltrated the White House and soon became what a senior administration official described as deputy president, the bombshell book claims. The Make America Great Again diehard, a former quarterback at the University of Connecticut, filled his office with a bevy of young beauties, hiring what a source called the Rockettes and the Dungeons and Dragons group. His staff included the most beautiful 21-year-old girls you could find, a senior White House official said, and they apparently needed only one qualification for the job, they had to love Trump. One of his aides was a former Radio City Music Hall Rockette who performed in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in Manhattan in 2019. Her resume consisted as a stint as a White House intern and a job as a dance instructor. McKenzie also hired then 20-year-old conservative Instagram influencer Cameron Kinsey as his external relations director. Kinsey later said in an interview, Only in Trump's America could I go from working in a gym to work in the White House because that's the American dream. McKenzie soon became a deputy president. He relished his political muscle and made no bones about flexing it. An insider quipped that in addition to comely young women, the handsome McKenzie hired guys who would be absolutely no threat to Johnny in going after those girls. What a pathetic loser. The book claims that uber Trump loyalist McKenzie made his chops playing on Trump's fears about the deep state schemers close to home. Some Trump aides privately compared the PPO under McKenzie to the Gestapo or the Stasi, always on the lookout for traitors from within. One White House underling learned of the office's alleged rabid fervor the hard way. The young woman liked an Instagram post by Taylor Swift, a Joe Biden supporter, and the gesture was deemed so alarming that White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows received the phone call about it in the middle of a Senate confirmation hearing for Trump Supreme Court Amy Coney Barrett. To the enforcers of Trumpian loyalty, this was a sign of treachery in the ranks, Carl writes, adding that the enforcers were in McKenzie's office. McKenzie, as the head of the PPO, oversaw the hiring and firing of about 4,000 political appointees in the White House after landing the position in February 2020. He began working for Trump in 2018 as only his baggage handler, only soon to be fired after the FBI background check discovered he'd failed to report suspiciously large sums of money tied to gambling. And just what is this guy up to recently? Former Trump aide John McKenzie appears before grand jury on Trump-related investigations. So I really hope a good film comes out about the Trump White House because it's absolutely insane. A guy whose only qualifications seem to be he used to be a quarterback and Trump's baggage handler got fired by the FBI for having loads of gambling debts, got rehired by Trump in a really senior position in the White House, and then proceeds to use that position to surround himself with much younger conservative influencers who got their jobs based on no qualifications at all, and only hired men he deemed that wouldn't be a threat to like his sexual conquests or advances on these conservative influences. No wonder Trump loves this guy so much, but that's so funny. Like this guy seems to have such a bad experience of dating apps. He literally had to enter the most powerful halls of power in the whole world and abuse his position to get young conservative women in his office so he could try and date them. I mean, I guess the one thing you can say about this guy, he's very, very driven to find a woman who actually likes him. He'll jump through all these hoops. But America is just such a fascinating country, like, that this guy could even get to such a powerful position based on no merit at all, just because Donald Trump likes him. And now he's trying to be, like, some conservative, like, influencer, making these stupid TikToks. Like, imagine, imagine all these people, regardless of political affiliation, imagine all the people in the past who have worked in that position at the White House and how much they've had to work, how many jobs they've had to have in government or before, all these qualifications they would need. And then imagine them afterwards, like a couple years, being like TikTok influencers and making these stupid sketches about liberal men drinking lattes and eating salads and talking about pronouns. Like, it's just so amazing, like, the trajectory of these people. It reminds me kind of like Trump being president and then, like, pushing Trump NFT trading cards. It's just amazing the type of people 
Trump really draws in and they all are very much like him. And I think it really speaks to like a certain brand of American conservative neoliberalism. American elite is just so filled with people like John McKenty and meritocracy is just dead. Like it's such a myth. And someone like this guy absolutely proves it. Trump's baggage handler, who then gets a very powerful position at the White House and then just surrounds himself with good looking young conservative influencers he hires based on no merit at all, just because they're good looking. Absolutely amazing. But let me know what you guys think of anything you've seen in this video. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.